I don't know who he is behind that mask of his, but I do know when we need him. And we need him now. Yes, Commissioner. And you come to headquarters right away. Robin, I'm busy solving a crime. Bat Cave, Robin speaking. It's Commissioner Gordon. I better take it. Hello, Commissioner. What's the trouble? I see. That sounds serious. We'll be right over. May of 1939, a character created by Bob Kane first appeared in Detective Comics. He was called the Batman. In the next five decades, Batman would appear in countless comic books, theatrical serial films, a television series, and feature-length movies. Each time the Cape Crusader graces the screen, be it movie or television, the nation becomes caught up in a phenomenon known as Batmania. In 1939, following the success of their Superman character, DC Comics was looking for additional comic book heroes to develop. That caught the interest of Bob Kane, who had an idea for a character. Kane was an artist who had drawn for several other comic publishers. He immediately contacted partner Bill Finger, and the two set about developing the Batman character. At first, Kane's original drawings lacked the traditional cowl mask, gloves, and cape. But at Finger's suggestion, Batman was to look more mysterious, more like the Shadow. Finger saw the character as a cross between Doc Savage, the Shadow, and, of all people, Sherlock Holmes. Batman made his first appearance in Detective Comics number 27 in May of 1939. But we didn't learn the legend of his origin until months later. A young Bruce Wayne witnesses the murder of both his parents by killer Joe Chill. And from then on, with the help of his trusted butler, Alfred, he devotes the rest of his life to avenging those deaths. Batman worked solo for a while, and then Robin was introduced by the same man who created the Joker, Jerry Robinson. The model for the Joker back in 1939 was actually a photo from the European horror film The Man Who Laughs. It was of actor Conrad Veidt, who also played the monster in The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, seen here. We never do learn of the Joker's origin until the Warner Brothers release in 1989. Robin's story, however, is told quite thoroughly. Dick Grayson was part of a family of circus people. His parents are killed by criminals who sabotage their equipment. Batman brings the crooks to justice and also looks after the young Dick. This is quite out of character for a guy who psychologists call preoccupied with his so-called mission in life. Batman always answers the call to duty. Some would call this psychosis, but people driven by vengeance sometimes have that problem. It can be an obsession. Over the years, the comic has gone through some major changes. Batman has actually become meaner. Robin, believe it or not, is dead. He has been for quite a while. There was even a second Robin introduced, but he bit the dust as well, leaving Batman to go it alone. The popularity of the Batman comic seems to coincide with the release of a movie or TV show featuring Batman. It all started with a 15-part serial in 1943. And about every 20 to 30 years, whenever a new Batman story comes to the screen, Batman comics and bat paraphernalia become hot collector's items. Batman made his first appearance on the big screen in 1943 in the Columbia serial called Batman. It was a smash hit. The serial featured Douglas Croft as Robin, with Lewis Wilson in the lead role as Batman. Batman and Robin were fighting against evil genius Dr. Daka, played by J. Carol Nash. Nash was a versatile dialect specialist who often performed in character roles, even playing a hunchback in the horror film The House of Frankenstein. The cliffhanger was the staple of these old movie serials. 
Each episode ends with the hero, or some helpless character, in an absolutely hopeless situation. We are told it'll be continued next week, but how can the characters possibly be saved? That's what kept viewers coming back week after week, and Batman was no exception. Is it? Could it be? Yes, it is the incomparable Batman on the big theater screen. Columbia Pictures presents Batman and Robin. Now you can see the Cape Crusader and the Boy Wonder in the famous serial that has amazed Bat fans around the world. Fifteen thrill-packed chapters. as Batman and Robin battle for justice in the adventure of the century. These pulse-pounding episodes will rivet you to your seat. Don't fail to see Batman and Robin. This serial has been out of print for a while due to the anti-Japanese sentiment that's sprinkled throughout the film. But the serial did present its characters fairly closely to their comic book counterparts. Our Batman here is driven to save the world and to bring his arch-rival, in this case, Dr. Daka, to justice. Even the villains were reasonable facsimiles of the original Kane-created bad guys. Batman next appeared on the screen in 1949. Again, it was a serial film, and again it was for Columbia Pictures. This time, Robert Lowry starred as Batman, with John Duncan as Robin. The new adventures of Batman and Robin introduced us to a few more characters from the comic books, including Commissioner Gordon, played by character actor Lyle Talbot. In this one, Batman and Robin have to contend with the wizard, seen at the left. The wizard's secret weapon has to do with broadcasting power, much like radio or TV waves are transmitted. Again, this serial continues a tradition of cliffhanger endings. Each episode winds up with a terrible, hopeless situation, only to be easily resolved in the beginning of the following week's episode. Batman and the police work closely together in this one, whereas in the first serial, they were adversaries, and Batman found it necessary to hide from the police. We also see Bruce Wayne don a disguise other than his Batman getup as he tries to pump the wizard's gang for information. We're also witness to the breaking down of the wizard's invention, this usually only happens at the conclusion of a serial, but this time around, it actually happens in the middle. During this period in Hollywood's history, the serial was a staple at the weekend matinee. Studios rushed to put out what the public demanded. With serials, it was always a question of quantity, not quality. And the public wanted plenty of Batman. Even though the serial was a success, all was pretty quiet on the bat front for the next 20 years or so. Then, in 1966, the ABC TV network had an opening for a mid-season replacement show, and Batman the TV series was born. The network even used the show's main characters to kick off its new fall season in a special promotional film. As a matter of fact, the footage you're about to see has never aired on television. Someone has stolen a show from this fall's new season of ABC programs. Holy grand larceny! Who would do such a thing? No doubt some poor wretch who's more to be pitied than feared. Commissioner Gordon has a preview of ABC's new shows in his office right now. What's this? It's a bat mic review cartridge I invented for the commissioner last week. It should have all the ABC fall shows on it. Let's check it against the schedule. I'll just slip this cartridge into this special set and see if it's been tampered with. Ordinarily, Robin, your Aunt Harriet and I don't permit you to watch television until after you've done your homework and caught your criminals. But I'm afraid we'll have to make an exception this time. The 1960s was an era of awakening awareness. So the only way to present an idea like Batman in the psychedelic decade was with plenty of camp. And in January of 1966, we had an ultra campy, ultra hip Batman on TV and our image of the Cape Crusader would never be the same. You're one of those who just can't get enough of Batman. Help is here. Bank, Jefferson and 12. Hold tight, bat turn. Surrender. We've got you, Bank Bandit. <laughs> I order you. 
you to surrender. I hope this doesn't depress you. Ah. Sensational. Don't spend more time with those mummies. Sometimes I think people expect too much of us, Batman. They have a right to expect it. But we're only human. There. Feel better? It's only temporary relief, we know. But the next episode is just a few bat hours away. The team of William Dozier and Lorenzo Semple Jr. brought us Batman, not just once, but twice a week, on Wednesday and Thursday nights. They also brought all of the dynamic duo's most hated villains to the small screen. The Joker, played by Cesar Romero. The Riddler, Frank Gorshin. The Penguin, Burgess Meredith. And Catwoman, played by various actresses. All appeared on the TV show that was to actually last only three seasons. The idea behind the show was to present it for two different audiences. On one level was the show's face value, which children went for. This was the action, the fights, the chases, and the cliffhanger ending of the show every Wednesday night to make sure we tune in on Thursday night to find out how the duo had survived the villain's evil schemes. On a completely different level was the campiness of the show, the sexual suggestiveness and tongue-in-cheek humor. This was for the adults in the audience. Well, mister, let's... He's not here. Yes, I sensed that the second I saw the room was empty. Adam West starred as the Cape Crusader, and Burt Ward co-starred as Robin. West was a supporting actor in Hollywood until a series of commercials he had made for the Nestle Company caught the eye of ABC. But even before he was cast as Batman, West had managed to nail down a leading role in a theatrical feature film, even if it was playing straight man for the Three Stooges, in 1965. Where's the sheriff? I hear Rance Roden has sent for his gunslingers to get Mr. Cabot, and that's nine of the meanest, orneriest galoots who ever cheated the gallows, and every one a dead shot. The outlaws is coming. And the Stooges is ready. was. West's stint with the Stooges convinced ABC he was capable of doing comedy with a straight approach. He had originally intended to go to Europe and appear in a series of spaghetti westerns a la Clint Eastwood, but when offered the chance of doing Batman, he quickly changed his mind. Believe it or not, West modeled himself after film star Errol Flynn's roguish, tongue-in-cheek film persona. It really worked. After West read the original script by Dozier, he was convinced. Week after week, the Cape Crusader copes with the tricky traps of vicious villains. Will the time arrive when the Cape crime fighters come too close to the jaws of death? Holy metronome, what a fate. Constant of player piano rolls. Watch Batman in color on ABC. West often complained that people didn't realize the show was being played for laughs. He felt people didn't take him seriously as an actor. This was especially true after the critics panned the premiere of the show. They just didn't get it. However, his millions of young fans ate it up. Are you ready? Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the greatest crime fighter of all time, Adam West, Bruce Wayne, millionaire philanthropist, Batman. Have you seen any unusual looking people around here? Me? Do you recognize me? Yeah. You, do you really? Yeah. Dr. Spock? Yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'll, I'll just stand here for a few moments and let you admire my incredible crime-fighting physique. <laughs> yes, watch this, kids. How's that? Yeah. Huh? Oh, nothing, nothing, a piece of cake. Anyway, it's great to be here in Kansas City. It's great to be anywhere. I've been a bat for about uh, 25 years now. It gets very lonely in the bat cave. So it's always great to get out and have a chance to meet you crime fighters of all ages in person. I really enjoy it. It seems everyone enjoyed the show, but the critics, the public loved it, and ratings soared right through the ceiling. Batman became one of TV's top 10 programs, 
and in its second season, it even introduced new bat vehicles. Waddle Canal, Batman. What now? What now? Why, everything's new as Batman and Robin battle crime with a battery of wonderful new bat novations. The Batcopter, the Batboat, the Batcycle, and Flash, a late bulletin from the Cape. Three, two, one. The Bat Rocket blasting off. See the dynamic duo dangle from new heights of danger. Careful, Robin, it's quite a drop. See them batter their way through new bat ventures with old friends. Correction theme. Holy dark ten in. I'm not just pussyfooting around this time, Batman. Meet their wild, weird new batversaries, the archest criminals of all crime. Be with Batman and Robin twice weekly, in color of course, on ABC. The show's success had a lot to do with the chemistry between its two stars. Robin was on hand from the beginning in this Batman series. He was portrayed by 19-year-old Burt Ward. There was some initial concern by the producers that he might outgrow the role and they'd have to recast the part. But Ward guaranteed them he wouldn't grow any bigger as the series skyrocketed in the ratings. No one knew that this summer, or I shouldn't say summer, mid-season replacement coming on January 12, 1966, was going to be as popular as it was. And uh, after the first night of airing, we had a 55 share. That meant of all televisions turned on in the nation, that the best estimate was that 55% of all televisions turned on were watching our show, which is really phenomenal. Ward had a propensity for getting slightly injured during stunt work and he was a champion of safety on the set. He says he thought the stunt coordinators on the show never really made the stunts as safe as they could be. They were always too concerned with bringing the stunt in on time. In addition to Ward, Adam West, and a lot of stuntmen, the cast of Crime Fighters was rounded out by Neil Hamilton as Commissioner Gordon, Stafford Rep as Chief O'Hara, and Alan Napier as Alfred the Butler. Also on hand in the third and final season of the show was Yvonne Craig as Batgirl. All of these supporting actors and actresses played their roles to the maximum, milking every laugh they could out of the tongue-in-cheek dialogue. Actually, the show's humor was universal, and Batman even became a hit in Latin American countries, complete with redubbed dialogue. La Mujer Gato. Oh. El Guasón. <laughs> el Pingüino. <laughs> el Acertijo. The show was indisputably hot. So hot that every week, guest stars lined up to do a cameo appearance. It was just like appearing on Laugh-In. Well, Robin, according to this schedule, everything seems to be in perfect shape. I fear we've been the victims of a harmless hoax. Oh, wait, Batman. On Friday night, they're supposed to be... Let's head back home and broil some steaks on the barbecue. But Batman! Listen to the kid. He's on to something. There's someone under that desk. I can't tell for sure, but I think it's a poor wretch. Holy Adlib! He looks familiar. Are you Milton Burl? If I'm not, I had a lot of fun using his credit cards. <laughs> now let me alone. Did you say I was wanted for murder? That's right. What do you mean? ABC wants you to murder the people every Friday night, starting this September at the stroke of nine. Holy affiliates. What's my sentence? Five years. Five years? Holy residuals. Five years, that will be beautiful. Below the line will be 80,000. Give 15 to send to my agent. In addition to guest cameos, the show also had car customizer George Barris. He designed the Batmobile, the Bat Cycle, the Bat Boat, and the Bat Copter. Even today, the original Batmobile is a real crowd pleaser whenever it goes out on tour. Based on the success of the Batman phenomenon, 
producer William Dozier made an attempt at another superhero series, The Green Hornet. The show was to be virtually identical to Batman with one difference, no humor. The show was supposed to be played absolutely straight. It was a real action-adventure program. Van Williams starred as Britt Reed, the alter ego of the Green Hornet, and Bruce Lee starred as Cato, his partner in crime fighting. The Hornet and Cato even appeared on Batman to cross-promote their series, but even that didn't help. The show bombed, despite the fact that Batman and Robin gave the show its network send-off. Another challenge for the Green Hornet. His aide, Cato, and their rolling arsenal, the Black Beauty. On police records, a wanted criminal, the Green Hornet is really Britt Reed, owner-publisher of the Daily Sentinel. His dual identity, known only to his secretary and to the district attorney. And now, to protect the rights and lives of decent citizens, rides the Green Hornet. In its attempt to copy Batman, the Green Hornet even had its own variation on the Batcave and Batmobile. Like Batman, the Green Hornet always wrapped things up with a wild fight scene. But in the Hornet's case, there were no superimposed biffs or zonks. In retrospect, producer Dozier feels camping it up like Batman might have made the Green Hornet a hit. <laughs> I've been on a collision course for years. Two brilliant men. There's room for only one. True. Sad, but true. I wish I didn't have to use this. Time be just right. Call Scanlon. Tell him it's time to pick up these two. One grease, one parboil. <laughs> Even though the Green Hornet flopped, Batman continued nevertheless. But the element that intrigued audiences about the Batman show was the same element that was responsible for its eventual demise. After a while, viewers wanted more than silly, contrived fight scenes and ludicrous crime detection. As the show began its third season, a new character was introduced to try and boost the ratings and to give Batman a potential love interest. Her name was Batgirl. Fear not, America. They are still on duty. That legendary duo, still humbly withholding their true identity under the guises of a noble flying rodent and a commonplace backyard bird. To the battlefield! But 
What's this? That's no tricycle, citizen. Holy femininity. Batgirl. Batgirl? 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 Snap and song. Biff and splat. What reassurance in those sounds. Well, the dynamic duo now becomes the tremendous trio. Batman in color on ABC. Batgirl is in reality Barbara Gordon, daughter of the police commissioner, who happens to be a public librarian in Gotham City. In the show, she was portrayed by Yvonne Craig. Craig, seen at the far right, grew up wanting to be a serious actress. And when approached with the possibility of playing Batgirl, she told producers she had never even seen the show. Initially, her character was supposed to be a bit sarcastic, but by the time the character actually appeared on the air, she was toned down and was just another member of Batman's gang. High noon in Gotham City. A deserted warehouse on the outskirts of town. And a ticking bomb spells trouble for Batman and Robin. Holy breaking and entering, it's Batgirl. Quick, Batgirl, untie us before it's too late. It's already too late. I've worked for you a long time and I'm paid less than Robin. Holy discontent. Same job, same employer means equal pay for men and women. No time for jokes, Batgirl. It's no joke. It's the federal equal pay law. Holy act of Congress. Can we talk about this later? Will Batgirl save the dynamic duo? Will she get equal pay? Tune in tomorrow or contact the Wage and Hour Division listed in your phone book under the U.S. Department of Labor. Despite the introduction of Batgirl and even more wacky gadgetry, the show continued to fall in the ratings. Batman, the TV series, was canceled following its third season. But not before 20th Century Fox released a big-budget Batman feature film showcasing the series' most popular villains. Emergency. Batman speaking. Warning all of you to brace yourselves for big news. The biggest. Tell them, Robin. Holy superlative, Batman. It's really exciting. Soon, very soon, Batman and I will be batapulting right out of your TV sets and onto your theater screens. That's right, Robin. Our first full-length motion picture feature in color opens a whole new world of thrills. The big screen gives us more space on land, sea, and in the air to challenge the most bataclysmic collection of super criminals ever their minimum objective must be the entire world. And here are the dastardly villains. The Catwoman. Oh, you're going to see the perfect crime when I get Batman in my claws. The Joker. Have you heard this one? It'll kill you, Batman. <laughs> the Penguin. There are two eggs this wily bird is going to scramble. Batman and Robin. <laughs> the Riddler. Question. Who's going to make the feathers fly and knock Batman and Robin out of the sky? See, the new weapons in the Bat Arsenal combat the forces of evil. The Batcopter. The exploding man-eating shark. Holy sardine! The relentless Megaton Magnet. The unholy Quartet Secret Submarine. Fire on! Fire on! The Bat Boat, in action. The Deadly Disintegrator. The attack on the Batcave. Holy hallucination! You'll blast through the skies on these mad, manned missiles. And you'll be with me, Robin, at the Bat Scanner, eavesdropping on Batman's romance. 
and you'll shudder at the death-dealing Polaris missiles. Brace yourself, Robin. This could be the end. And that's just a sample of the exciting exploits ahead in our first feature motion picture. Holy memoranda, folks. Make a note not to miss it. Good thinking, Robin. Following the cancellation of the TV series, Adam West's career continued, but he didn't set the world on fire. He did personal appearances and appeared in films like The Happy Hooker Goes Hollywood and Zombie Nightmare. At press get-togethers, he says he would have loved to have played Batman in the 1989 Warner Brothers film, but all they offered him was a cameo role, playing Bruce Wayne's father in the scene where the family gets killed. Aside from the occasional reunion show with the rest of the cast, West lives with his family in Ketchum, Idaho, but he still can't escape Batman's indelible persona. We wanted to see if Adam would try it on. You know, that's one of the best uh, amateurs I've ever seen. It is an amateur, definitely, but it really is. It's very good, except he's got oh, he's had a lobotomy. <laughs> Burt Ward tried a few other shows after Batman. He landed a role in a soap opera, Santa Barbara, and he tried his hand in movies with titles like Night School and Scream. On the bat front, he also provided the voice of Robin in an animated cartoon series. He's now out of show business and runs a largely successful licensing firm in Los Angeles. But like Adam West, memories of his superhero image will probably be with him forever. Did anybody know that Joan Collins played one of our... Yes. 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 And um, <laughs> Shelley Winters was a real character. She was a real character. See, I was 20 years old then. Shelley Winters had a reputation. Anybody know about Shelley Winters' reputation? She likes younger men. <laughs> and everybody had been teasing me on the set. Watch out. Watch out. Because when Shelley Winters comes out, she is going for you. <laughs> and I said, no, no, no. And so, at the scene that Shelley Winters was supposed to enter is that Batman and Robin were, were tied up in electric chairs. That's right, we were going to be electrocuted, and there certainly wasn't a lot of room to move. And she came on, and I met her, and actually she's a very, very nice lady. But she kept inviting me to go back into her dressing room. And I kept very nicely declining. And I think it was the third day of the show that she says, she'd been telling me, she says, Bert, I have this book for you. I want you to read this book. You know what the name of the book was? The title? The Delights of Older Women. <laughs> This time, he would be truer to the comics, and he would be the centerpiece of one of the most eagerly awaited motion pictures of all time. But in the 20 years since its network cancellation, Batman has acquired a huge legion of fans, not unlike the cult classics Star Trek and The Twilight Zone. By 1988, Batmania was about to descend upon America once again. By 1988, Batmania had approached a level of intensity not seen since the show's original network run two decades earlier. But this was only the beginning. Across the ocean in England, director Tim Burton was feverishly completing a $50 million feature film version of Batman that was soon to become the biggest box office smash of all time. The resurgence of popularity experienced by the Batman TV series coupled with growing excitement about the new feature film, resulted in Batmania reaching an all-time high. Consequently, original series stars Adam West and Burt Ward were in great demand for lectures, live shows, and personal appearances on TV talk programs. TV's original dynamic duo made an appearance on the syndicated Will Schreiner show that even had a non-paying studio audience practically leaping out of their seats with excitement. This amateur home video footage was shot during the actual taping of the Shriner program that reunited the Caped Crusaders with the TV Batman's head writer, Ralph Stanley Ross. And as the former Batman scribe discussed what it was like writing for TV's campiest characters, 
the writing was already on the wall for Batman fans. The summer of 1989 promised not only the release of Tim Burton's $50 million spectacular, but an onslaught of Batmania, the likes of which had never been seen. Starring Michael Keaton as the Cape Crusader, with Jack Nicholson as the Joker, Warner Brothers' release of Batman was more true to the tone of the Batman character first created in 1939. Keaton plays Batman to the utmost, being as mean to criminals as possible without being downright sadistic. And Nicholson's Joker was a role he was meant to play his entire career. He is evil personified. Liberties are even taken with the story of the origin of Batman to include the Joker instead of Joe Chill. We're even told the story of how the Joker came into being, something the TV series never explained. The sets for Gotham City also recall that dark, gloomy atmosphere that Kane and Finger were able to convey in the early comic books. In the comics, Batman is not a nice guy, and he isn't in the film either. The week that Warner Brothers released the new Batman to theaters, a Los Angeles radio station, KRLA, decided to cash in on all the excitement. Robin himself, Burt Ward, was actually on hand. Also joining in the fun was the Joker, Cesar Romero, the Penguin, Burgess Meredith, and Catwoman, Julie Newmar. It doesn't matter if you're a child or a grown-up. Just what is our fascination with Batman? Is it the fact that we're privy to his secret identity? Is it his drive for vengeance against all criminals? Is it that we recognize some of our own dark side in Batman? Or is it that we just don't have enough real life heroes and we have to employ fantasy to find them? Whatever it is, we're definitely in love with Batman. We used to have to wait about 20 or 30 years between Batman movies or shows for a fantasy fix. But based on the success of the most recent Batman film, it's a safe guess that we won't have to wait quite that long again. As long as we need a hero, we need Batman. And that means Batmania will go on and on.